Yo, yo, yo. What is going on, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love? My name is Jamal Pope, a.k.a. J Phoenix, and this is going to be your astrology forecast for Hump Day! Wednesday, November 15th of 2023. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful week so far. Let's go ahead and hop into the transits for today, see what we got going on with these celestial energies so we can navigate this celestial astrological meteorology, the celestial weather. Let's see what we got going on. All right, so we do have, of course, the moon here in Sagittarius. That's at 19 degrees of Sagittarius starting off the day. And we do have the sun and Mars still traveling with each other. They will, uh, the sun will move to 23 degrees today as well. So like I said, the sun is slowly catching up to Mars. So we are still, of course, you know, coming off of that new moon. The Scorpio energy really has kicked in. And, you know, you're, we're really starting to feel the depths of Scorpio energy. Now, we do also, of course, like I said, I talked about this yesterday, we do have Mercury and Venus, which are traveling at very similar paces, but Mercury does finally, uh, well, Mercury has been moving faster than Venus, but it kind of moves past it as far as like their little uh, sextile goes. But they're still in sextile today, and they both will move to eight degrees today. And what does that do? I talked about it yesterday. It does make the quincunx over to Jupiter over here in Taurus. So let's just go ahead and just fast forward to that and take a look at it. Because that's like the main thing today. Um, outside of that, we will see the moon will square Neptune. It also will trine the north node. But, you know, we're going to see both Mercury and Venus move to eight degrees within the same hour. And like I said, they are starting that quincunx over to Jupiter which creates a nice little yod here. Now, as I've been saying with this yod, the Venus and the Mercury is opening up some opportunities to where we, you know, we can communicate, you know, it's about communicating our values, but it's also about, you know, trying to figure out how we relate to other people, you know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to our belief structure, because Mercury isn't Sag, and it can be pretty idealistic, I'm not gonna lie. But idealism is not bad. It isn't bad. It's just whether or not these things can actually be something that is integrated into society and integrated into the moral fabric of society, I think is the other thing. You know, a transit like this, especially with the moon here in Sag, just going to square Neptune, this can definitely be, you know, people kind of getting caught up and maybe getting projected on as far as what they feel like well, what people feel like they should believe. So, oh, you should believe this, or you should believe that. Or, you know, I don't understand, you know, why you feel this way, because that's not what I intended. It's like, well, I, this is the way I still feel. People can still get caught up in their illusions about certain situations and not really heed the conversation or the communication that's coming from other people. Even though this is a sextile and it's a harmonious aspect, it just brings up the opportunity. But the fact that they are both in Quincunx to Jupiter, there could be, we could be at odds. We could be looking at Jupiter from different angles. We could be looking at it from the Mercury angle, which like I said, is very idealistic, uh, rather hopeful, despite the fact that Mercury doesn't like to be in Sag. It's, and we had to, let's think about why Mercury doesn't want to be in Sag, right? When Mercury is in Gemini, he's able to he's able to move fast, or they, because Mercury is really as hermaphroditic as anything. If, if there is a planet that was non-binary, it is Mercury. Like it's and because most of the planets, you know, they have like they tend to be more masculine or more feminine. If there was a planet that was neither or it was both or whatever like that, it would be Mercury, right? So, you know, when it's in Gemini, you got to think about Gemini, it's air, it moves fast, it moves quick, and it, like I said, it rules the mind. But with it being in Sag, it takes it to this sort of etheric realm where it can be hard to communicate, right? It can be hard to communicate and bring these dreams into reality and bring that vision to reality because this is mutable fire. Right. So it's like a plasma almost. And 
it's just kind of, it's it's kind of like even like with the water too. It's like when you try and speak in these areas, there's a reason why Mercury doesn't like to be in Pisces is because like you ever try speaking underwater, you can't hear anything. So that's the thing about this. Now, when it comes to Mercury with Sagittarius, you gotta remember this is Jupiter's realm, this is Zeus's realm. Mercury, when he's here, when they're here, they're not able to go out and actually, you know get all the information, communicate with the people. You know, Mercury is, like I said, that Mercury is the reporter, it's the writer, right? And But when it's in Sag, it's just, he's just taking orders from Zeus. It's like, all right, Mercury, I need you to go here. I need you to go here. I need you to deliver this message here and here. Mercury's just sitting here writing down all the notes that Zeus is giving him. And while Mercury has like this sort of sort of angst almost to kind of get out there and explore and meet new people and, you know, spread the message, spread the gospel and stuff. But when Mercury is in Sag, he's not spreading the gospel. He's simply just downloading the information, you know? So it can make him a little bit angsty, even though it's mutable fire. But you also have to think about it too, is that in Sagittarius season, this is when you don't, this is when the sun is, lo is, is losing its light, right? The night is becoming longer than the daytime which means that Mercury has less time to get out there and communicate with the people, has less time to get out there and take down the information to do the investigations, to do the writing. Mercury has less time, right? So that's the other part about this. So we're coming at it from that angle, right, where we had to pretty much utilize all the time that we have, right, try to make the best out of it with the Mercury and Sag, and then you have Venus over here in Libra, which is very strong, mind you. Venus is at its home. Yeah, the south is there, but Venus is at its home. And we're probably going to more or less be going in that direction, trying to figure out the values in our relationships, how we can better relate and understand each other, trying to bring that peace and balance to things. There's a financial aspect to here, too. There's a beauty aspect to this as well. And with these awkward stares to Jupiter, right, which, of course, Jupiter much rather be where Mercury is right now, right, so that's the weird thing about this, and Venus, it likes to be a Libra, so it's, Venus is fine where it is, it wouldn't mind being where Jupiter is, though, so I would say, if anything, Venus probably has the upper hand in this entire yacht here, has the upper hand, but we got to remember what it's with, it's with the south node, so this can be, you know, relationships that could come out of nowhere. This could be people coming from the past. It's like blast from the past, potentially. Maybe people wanting to almost tie up loose ends with the Mercury and Sag. Or like I said, someone has like this idealistic vision. This could be someone throwing like a Hail Mary. This is like a Hail Mary kind of energy where, you know, maybe somebody goes after an ex and maybe they haven't spoken to them in years, but because the South Node is here, it's kind of bringing up shit from the past. This could be Hail Mary passes from exes. Like you could be, or it doesn't have to be exes. It could be friends. You can get communication from friends out of nowhere here. And, you know, something like this, it could be sort of like a tying up loose ends kind of deal or like that last ditch effort kind of deal, right? Now, of course, we do have, like I said, the moon here in Sagittarius too. And we're going to see it make the square over to Neptune. So once again, it's like, yeah, we're going to be feeling this idealism being a Sagittarius. We want to feel this vision. We're going to be feeling like we want to be jovial and joyous. It kind of brings up that holiday energy. you got to remember the next time that the moon comes around to Sag, we are going to be in the full swing of the holidays, right? Because the sun will be in Sagittarius as well. So and these energies are quickly moving out of Scorpio. The Scorpio season, the Scorpio energy moved very, very quickly, right? So we are, but we are still in it. So we're still in this sort of investigation mode. The sun and Mars are beginning to try over to Neptune at the same time that this moon is squaring it. We got to remember, of course, the moon did try over to the North Node as well. But ultimately, this is the sort of aspect. This is this is sort of the sort of day where, you know, be prepared. For potential things kind of coming out of nowhere, conversations kind of coming out of nowhere, um, relating to people in ways that you probably didn't think that you could relate to them as um, 
wouldn't be surprised if some past life stuff comes up because the south node, like I said, is dispositing this Venus. And we have the north and we have the moon, which is going to be in sextile to the south node and trining the north node at this as well. So there's we yeah, have that whole element going on too. Um, like I said, this is one of those energies, and I guess you could say there's like another loose yod. That happens with the South Node and Moon and Uranus. It's a very, very loose one, though. The main one is Jupiter, Venus, and Mars. So, which is interesting. It's two benefics and a malefic with that one. So, well, not even a malefic. Mercury, Mercury pretty much takes on the persona of whatever planet it's closest to, right? So, being that it's in Sag, I wouldn't even really consider it a malefic. I think because an aspect to benefics, it kind of acts as like a minor benefic. But this is one of those energies where it's like, you know, like I said, things can kind of come out of nowhere. Conversations can come out of nowhere. Maybe some past life stuff comes up. You may end up meeting someone today or someone may make it like it may maybe made known to you. Maybe they don't realize, but you'd be like, oh, wow, I know you from a past life. You may be tying up loose ends from a past life. Maybe somebody owed you money from a past life. And they never gave you the money. And then today you actually get the money. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's that kind of weird-ass energy. And with the moon that's in square to Neptune with all this, it, it's definitely going to be a day, especially being the hump day. I, I'd imagine, see, like, it's funny, too. Like, whenever I think of Neptune and Pisces, I'm thinking of, like, the media. And with the moon in square to it, I'm thinking about, like, how is the media going to try and sway people's beliefs today about certain situations? That's really what it comes down to. I wouldn't be surprised, too, with this Venus, Mercury, and Quincunx to Jupiter, that we see some weird, di like, relationship dynamic that pops up. Maybe something that we hear from, like, a celebrity, like, some, maybe some, some sort of celebrity relationships uh, kind of gets put like on the forefront and everyone has to publish their opinion about it. Um, this could be, I, I could, I see breakups and I also see people getting together. Maybe we get like a random like relationship that's kind of put on like the pedestal or kind of put out there and it just shocks everybody. You'd be like, whoa, they and they got together. Like it's that kind of energy. And, you know, like I said, with this, Sun and Mars still traveling with each other. We we're wanting to get to the bottom of things still with the Scorpio. We we're wanting to kind of uncover the deepness of things and, you know, confront our shadows. But it's about learning how to dance with our shadows, not just sweeping our shadows under the rug or, you know, disdaining our shadows. Right. That's even egoic. You can't just you can't just absolutely kill your ego. You got to learn how to dance with your ego, right? So that's sort of what this all comes down to. I think it can be a very positive day, even though we do have some challenging aspects. But ultimately, I think this is just this whole Scorpio season has been about uncovering, 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 and transforming, and transforming, and transforming. And you know, if and the thing about it is that like if you resist the change and if you resist the transformation then it's just going to make it that much harder for you. So, I mean, if, if you, and I'm going to be straight up, if you haven't, like, cried at least once during the Scorpio season, I, I, I don't know what you're doing. Like, I'm just saying, like, I don't know what you're doing. And maybe you don't have, like, any water energy. Maybe you have nothing in the 4th, 8th, or 12th house and shit. But I'm just saying, like, if you haven't cried or at least been on the verge of tears at least once this Scorpio season, and you're probably not doing it right. Like, I'm just saying, like, it's been a very interesting Scorpio season for transformation, and we all can feel it. Now, if you are a Scorpio, more than likely you have cried at least once, and you're more accustomed to dealing with the transformation. Whenever the sun goes into Scorpio, a lot of, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna lie, unless you have Scorpio placements, whenever the sun goes into Scorpio, people turn into kind of, they kind of, <sighs> I, I got to be up front because the Scorpio, I got to be raw. People kind of turn to bitches. Like, they, people can't handle the Scorpio energy because it's too deep for them. That's why they, they clamber towards Sagittarius. That's why people put up their decorations for Christmas and stuff so fucking early because they can't deal with the depth and the darkness of Scorpio, despite the fact that it's by going through those depths and going through that darkness that you find your inner light. That's the thing about Scorpio that no one wants, that no one really wants to talk about, how it's really a sign of purity and how it's like you have to go through those depths, you have to go through those shadows and go through the dark to get to your light. But people kind of turn into bitches around this time because they don't know how to do it the 
Scorpio energy. But if you have Scorpio energy, then you good. You know how to navigate this and you can help other people around you. And this is also the time when people realize that Scorpio has a pretty tough job. We are literally walking transformers. We walk and we absorb and we are magnets for energy. We transmute that shit and then we have to release that shit. That's why Scorpio can be so moody sometimes and all over the place. It's seemingly hot and cold. It's because it when we're cold, it, that's when we are in our transmuting stage. That's when we are we have taken in a lot of energy. We are a magnet for that shit. And then we have to transmute that shit. We are walking transformers. And people don't even realize it. If you are a Scorpio, if you have Scorpio placements, and you're just say if you're just walking in like the mall or you're walking in a store, you probably will pick up on someone's energy and someone's emotions. And, and it's not even yours, but you will transmute that shit and then you release that. You know, that's what Scorpio does. And when the sun goes into Scorpio, everybody is doing this. And some people simply can't handle it. Some people can't handle the heat. They can't handle the pressure because it's a lot. I'm just being honest with you guys. But utilize this time to realize this is also a good time to start to recognize what emotions are yours and what emotions aren't yours, right? But so we all are connected. That's the thing about this. The thing that I think can help you through this time outside of just being emp empathic or whatever like that, I think the thing that can help you is realizing that, A, you can't, it's not your job to fix anybody, A, it's not your job to fix anybody, right? And like, yeah, you're going to feel the people's emotions, but emotions don't have to just stay there. They can move, they can flow. I know it's fixed water that we're in, but even ice melts. Even ice melts, you know what I'm saying? So like even, even the poles go through their periods where it recedes and then it, it recedes and contracts and then it sort of releases and then, you know, the ice caps will, or the ice caps will expand and then they'll contract. They'll expand and they'll contract. They'll expand and they'll contract. And we are very similar in that regard. So utilize this time to your advantage to – start to recognize, you know, what emotions are yours, what emotions are not yours, transmute whatever you're feeling, transform it, move through that shit, and rise like the phoenix. Let's go ahead and get into the cards for today. So we're going to be feeling that yacht today. It's at eight degrees, so decision time. Decision time with the eight because the eight is Capricorn Saturnian energy. So decisions, decisions, decisions. Right? Let's see what we got going on for the card. All right. I have the eight of cups. <laughs> I told y'all. Yeah, I thought that, I mean, I told you the energy was going to feel a little bit heavy, but the Eight of Cups, this is speaking about being able to turn away from what has happened in the past and to move towards a better tomorrow and a better future. You may not know what's going to happen. You may not be able to see the top of the staircase. You may not know what's going to happen after the 1,000th step, but you need to take the first step and turn away from and the thing about this card too is like yeah she's swimming away from the other cups and she said she has like she even has like a light that's guiding her right but she is her own light so you have to trust your own intuition that's the thing about this we have that followed by i guess i didn't shuffle this well enough because we got these cards yesterday we had the two of swords as well so yeah we have to it's, it's about moving away from the stalemate moving away from the stalemate in life you know, stop bargaining with yourself. Stop telling yourself is like, you know what? When I have this thing in my life, that's when I will move in this direction. Or when I when I achieve this thing in my life, that's when I'll decide to open that business. Or when I, you know, when, when I lose this much weight, that's when I'll ask so and so out. Like it's like, look, don't freaking trap yourself in that. Don't give, you're giving yourself conditions, you know. So don't be. This is not a conditional love. Some of you guys have conditional love for yourself. You have to establish unconditional love for yourself. 
And that is something that needs to be practiced because it's not necessarily easy, but you cannot just exhibit, un you, have, you can't just exhibit conditional love for yourself and then expect the world to have unconditional love for you. Ooh, ooh, say that again. You cannot give yourself conditional love and expect unconditional love from the world around you. We have that followed by the five of wands. Don't get caught up in the pettiness and the petty drama of the day because it will probably seem a little dramatic in many ways, but don't get caught up in that. You are destined for more. You're destined for greatness. And while it may be sad that you're moving away from certain things, maybe because those things maybe did give you some happiness and some joy in the past, and you know maybe it did contribute to positive experiences in the past, but everything comes to an end, and it's okay to move on, and it's okay to be different, and there's no need for you to just stay stuck anymore in that place. Bottom of the deck, I do have the Magician card in reverse. So maybe you aren't feeling like the magic is working. and Maybe you don't feel like your wand is working, but keep at it. Or maybe you just have to adjust the way that you're waving that wand because um, you're trying to wave it like how someone else would wave it and using someone else's incantation. But your incantation, your spell, your magic is something that comes from within you. So only you know what that magic is, only you know how to cast that magic, but you're casting it in a way that you're trying to mimic someone else, and that's where you're tripping up. That is going to do it for your astrology forecast today. I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. If you'd like to have a personal reading with me, beloved, you can follow the link in the description below to my website, jphoenix.com. And as always, y'all take care. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful hump day. And I'll see you guys on Thursday's astrology forecast. Peace.